So Nicholas, comm commiserations on being the first to be fired. Good How are you right. feeling? Good, yeah, quite positive about the whole thing. Yeah. Just uh, enjoying it right now. How did you feel when you heard those words, you're fired? <laughs> I was really angry at the time, actually. Um, yeah, I remember just feeling really peeved off because it was almost, it was so likely to happen that it was just ridiculous that it did. In the boardroom there was a disagreement about people from different educational backgrounds. Do you think you were a bit patronising? <laughs> it, it did come across fairly patronising. I mean, I did really struggle at that point in the boardroom and to look back on it now it is kind of a cringy moment. Um, I was trying to find a reason as to why the, the group had split and, and if, I, if I looked with hindsight I would probably say it was more to do with the, the kind of typical alpha males against the more unusual males. Um, or, or indeed just the people that Alex got on with better. Did you feel like a bit of a misfit within the group? Yeah, absolutely. I, I pretty much felt like a misfit from the moment I first saw the candidates. And I thought to myself in my head, you know, how am I actually going to, to deal with this? Mm. So Alan called you a toff. Do you think that was fair? I think it's a bit of a generalisation on his part. I mean, I can see why he did it, but in actual fact, if you, if you saw my, my family home and, you know, where I went to school, not really a toff. I mean, I've aspired to, to kind of be this, you know, more, more classy individual. You know, when, when I came to London and I wanted to be a barrister and an artist, I knew that I was going to be mixing in, you know, very highbrow circles. And it's, you know, it is all about social climbing. I don't mind being called a social climber. Because that's how you succeed, you know, social climbing, career climbing, it's kind of one and the same thing. And, um, you know, if, if I'm going to be called a toff as a result of that, fine. I'd rather be called a toff than an arrogant <laughs> for example. What's your honest opinion of Sir Alan Sugar? Honestly, I admire his money. Him as a person, I don't think he's all that. I don't think he's the most fantastic businessman in the world. Obviously, he's done well. Lots of people have done well. You know, my father's done really well. He came from a similar background to, to Sir Alan, maybe not, you know, not completely comparable, but he was from Brighton and he built himself up to be a, a good solicitor. And, you know, a lot of people do it. And I think there is always this, this almost artificial hype about, you know, I admire Sir Alan, he's my hero, he's everything I ever wanted. I admire him to a certain extent, but, you know, that's not where it ends. I don't necessarily think that he's fantastic in all arenas of business. Yes, of course he did well when he was younger. Is he a good, is he a good people manager? Do his companies run as smoothly as they could? I don't know, but I'm, I'm thinking not necessarily so. You know, he, he's got some skills, but he doesn't have every skill in the book. He's, not, he's certainly not a god of business. Do you think you could do better than him eventually? I think, yeah, within my own rights, within, within the right field, for example, you know, going back into the law. Yeah, I can do better. Not necessarily financially. He's been lucky. He bought property at the right time. I think a lot of his fortune that he's amassed is owing to the, the, the property market. Anyone can do that. I did that a few years ago. Um, I think in terms of career success, certainly I'm a determined person. I only got all my high sparkling grades that I've been going on about so much through aspiring to be the best. And uh, if I don't consider him to be the best, then I will aspire to be above him. So what are your plans now then, career plans now? It's all looking good, very good. I start a pupillage at one of the best barrister chambers in London in October. Um, and in May I'm having an exhibition of my art in Mayfair, in a, a very swanky gallery. Tell me a bit about the art. What's... Um, I've painted for, from a young age. I was never trained. So there again it's kind of a field into which uh, I've entered without the necessary qualifications. Um, and, it's, and it's a very hard world. The London art scene is particularly pretentious. There's so much of this installation rubbish and, you know, it, it's almost like a closed world because they do work that is so wacky to the, to the outsider that you can't even understand it. But most importantly, my painting does target Joe Blocks and I think I've got a better idea in terms of selling art than, than most professional artists because at least my stuff's accessible. What are you going to do with an installation put it in the middle of your lounge? I don't think so. Whereas at least my stuff could hang on the wall. It's quite a contradiction, isn't it? You say you want to reach out to Joe Bloggs and the mm. way you've come across on the TV programme. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can only really reach out to the rich Joe Bloggs if I'm going to succeed. Um, I know that's very exclusionary, but I do sell postcards for £1 each, you know, if, if, uh, if anyone else wants to buy one.